Hey everybody, it's Saturday night and we're going to take a trip around the world here. So this is my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank, not a lot going on in here this week. I do need to get in there and do a water change, you can see the water level is getting a little low. I don't mind topping off between water changes, but I don't like to do it too often. Uh, what happens is the water evaporates out of the tank and it leaves behind all of the minerals, all of the nitrates, all the phosphates, all of the dissolved solids stay in the tank. So when you add fresh water, you're adding more solids in there and then as time goes on and more water evaporates out, you wind up distilling it down and you wind up increasing the amount of dissolved solids in your tank so it's never a good idea to do too many top-offs between water changes now I use RO water to do my top-offs so it's not as bad but I still generally try not to do more than one or two top-offs between water changes and I've already done one this week so now that the water is getting a little bit low it's probably time to get in there and do another water change uh, you can also see the filter intake there is all sort of gunked up with uh, debris and moss is growing on it. Some of that uh, Marimo moss ball looks like it's broken loose and is growing on it. So that needs to get cleaned off. You know, just a little basic tank maintenance. Other than that, not a lot going on. I will say, I do want to point out, I've had so many people ask me about the big fat lip on this angelfish here. I don't know what that is. This fish has always had a really funny fat upper lip and over time it has slowly gotten bigger and bigger and bigger and it, that's just what it looks like now it's some weird growth it's not a tumor uh, i'm sure it's not a tumor like i say it's been there for the entire time i've had the fish when i got it uh, the size of a quarter it had an unusually large lip and it has just always gotten bigger and bigger and bigger as the fish has aged. I've had this fish for about five years now, so I'm not concerned about it. Uh, if you're just noticing it, I know it looks really weird, but again, I've had this fish for five years and it's always had that funny looking lip like that. So, not, you know, not a big concern of mine. So, moving on, nothing else really to talk about in that tank. The Garami tank here. I was going to point out how I've still got quite a few neons left in this tank. I put, oh, I don't know, maybe 15 of them in there a little while ago, and it looks like I've got at least a dozen still in there, but while I was standing here looking at the 29-gallon um, tank, I noticed, I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not, uh, if you can look in the reflection in the you can see the fish fighting over that dead neon back there so I did just lose a neon in this tank otherwise everything is going pretty much okay somewhere in there are my two new um, there's one right now speaking of the devil my two new honey garamis this one that we're looking at now is really good looking the color is starting to come in we're starting to see some black tracing on the fins I'm really happy with my little accidental purchase of the honey garamis there. They were supposed to be pearl garamis, but they wound up being honey garamis by accident. And again, I'm not complaining. And then there's the other one down there. So it looks like I got a male and a female if their coloration is anything to go by. One is much more drab than the other. Still no issues with the angelfish. Uh, having put my red tail loach back in this tank I am having some minor issues in the way of if he comes out um, this tank down here below me really reflection really gets on my nerves so if you can see those scrape marks on the side of the loach there there's a good look at them I'm sure I don't have to tell you where that's from that is probably from fighting over space with that stupid red tail loach I have also noticed my Moonlight Garami has a few scratches and scrapes. That is unlikely that it has anything to do with that loach and based on where they're positioned, I'm going to guess that she probably dashed and banged her head into something and has those little scrapes on her, what I'll call her forehead for lack of a better word there. There's probably actually is a better word, I just don't know it. <laughs> so. It's interesting when I look at this loach because loaches are supposed to be more delicate. They're said to be scaleless fish, even though they do in fact have scales. They're just very tiny and they're embedded in the skin. So for purposes of medication, you have to think about them as being scaleless, but they're not really scaleless. 
but they do have skin exposed on the surface and what we're seeing is scratch marks rather than the major damage we saw on my gudgeon and I think the reason for that is the gudgeon has scales and when those subocular spines would flick out it was peeling scales off of the fish which was making it look really severely damaged and it was probably just scratching the skin underneath and that's why it looked all white if you've ever scaled a fish when the scales come off it's all sort of white and nasty looking underneath but fish skin is really tough so that's probably all that ever happened to my gudgeon was the skin got scratched but all those scales getting ripped off made it look like a lot of damage this fish doesn't have those scales that can be ripped off like that and so all we see on this one is some scrape marks down its side and since this fish has those same subocular spines and is about equal in size to the red tail loach I'm not going to worry too much about it again that fish has always just sort of been problematic for me uh, every now and again I'm seeing like a little glimpse of red flicking out from underneath of that piece of wood back there that's that red tail loach's tail right there so as I suspected, it would go right back into living underneath of that piece of wood. So we'll see it from time to time as it comes out to get something to eat when I throw food in the tank. But other than that, we're probably not going to really ever see it again. So moving on to my T-bar tank. This is shaping up to be a very long trip around the world if I keep going this much time on each tank. Um... The only thing I can talk about in here that I've got going on different is I added a couple of male cherry barbs to accompany the female that's in here but she's all the way down at this end of the tank and hasn't really been seeming to pay any attention to the males and vice versa so I don't know if that's going to change or not she's five years old now maybe she's one of the earlier fish I've ever had uh, just been around forever and then these two are still probably juvenile I don't even think they're mature yet they're so small so who, who knows what's going to happen with them in the long run we'll see if they wind up um, you know coloring up and mating or whatever I just finally have some male cherry barbs in this tank and I can't wait to see that vibrant red color whether they pair off with the females or not the other thing I wanted to point out is you'll notice that pair of neons as far as I can tell I'm down to two neons in this tank and this is the tank that I thought for sure there was nobody in there that was gonna bother the neons these angelfish never look twice at the neon so I wasn't concerned about that and so far I've not seen anybody going after the neons but every time I come in here I just swear there's less and less neons so what I have noticed I'm not sure why he's hiding so much back there unless he's feeling guilty because he knows I'm about to start talking about him my t-bar back there is looking unusually plump and happy so I'm wondering if that is not the reason I have only two neons left in this tank. If that's the case, those little cherry barbs right there might not be long for this world either. Uh, I hope that's not the case because I've waited to get some male cherry barbs for quite a long time and I finally have them. So hopefully they'll be okay in this tank. If not, you know, no great loss. I'm not going to cry over it, but we'll see how that works out. But my T-bar is definitely looking extra fat and happy these days, and I'm getting dwindling numbers of neons. So I'm going to guess the T-bar is the culprit. I really don't know who else it would be. And again, I've never seen anybody go after the neons, but they're vanishing, so somebody is. Um... I also put a new LED on this tank, like I did my Garami tank. It's just a inexpensive shop light, but I really, really like it, and I would like to get some more from some of my other tanks, but as of yet, we have not gotten any. Um, moving on to my Black Ghost Knifefish tank. I did get the tiniest little glimpse of the Black Ghost Knifefish the other day. It darted out from its nighttime cave and slipped in the back door of its daytime cave and that's pretty much all we got to see of it. That's all I ever get to see of it really. Um, at night when I turn the lights off, actually let's try to do it right now. Normally it's a little early if, if timing has anything to do with it but a lot of times when I turn the lights off at night, when I turn the forward fixture off, you'll see the Black Ghost will come out of its daytime tank and it'll just make its way over there. So I see that at night and then I see it make its way back in the morning 
So it's still very early in the evening for it to just, you know, be ready to do that. But normally when I come down here around 10 o'clock at night and I turn that forward fixture off, it's almost like clockwork. As soon as I turn that light off, it comes right on out of its cave and slips on into that other cave. It doesn't swim around the tank or anything. It just goes into its nighttime cave. And then in the morning, a lot of times it'll already be back in there, but then sometimes I'll see it go around the back and it comes in that way. And I got that on video the other day. At any rate, other than that, I got nothing else going on in this tank. It's cleaned up really nicely. I do want to get in here at some point and do some work getting it um, a little bit redecorated. Nothing major. I just want to open these caves up a little so that the... Um, black ghost has a little more room to get in and out of stuff in there i'm looking at that little thing sticking out i couldn't tell whether that was the tip of a white tail but it's not it's just a piece of a leaf that's stuck under the cave i was beginning to worry because if it was his tail it was unusually still so other than that nothing going on here just a little bit of upcoming maintenance maybe a little bit of remodeling and of course anytime i get any video of the black ghost knife fish i'll get it on video and I'll go ahead and post that so make sure you're subscribed and you won't miss any of that getting over here to my native tank the only thing really going on this week in this tank is the crayfish you can see right there front and center at the bottom yesterday I found it in the far right hand corner in the back and I thought it was dead but it wasn't. It was still waggling its legs around a little bit very slowly. And so I decided I would just go ahead and leave it alone and see what happened. And here we are the next day. And pretty much what I expected to happen is what's happening. It doesn't look like it's going to be surviving. It was waggling its legs around a minute ago. So it is still alive. Or at least it was as of, you know, maybe half an hour ago. Um, so we'll see. Again no great loss the weather's going to be warming up here any day now at least so the calendar tells me and we will be able to get out and get some more crayfish and catch some more um of those rosy side days i really don't want to put anything else in the tank i've got pretty much a full stock load we may add some more of these uh golden shiner minnows down here no more creek chubs though the creek chubs are getting mighty big and i got plenty of them that rosy side dace there, though, I would dearly love to see a school of those in this tank. And this, of course, is one of those tanks that I want to add one of those LEDs to. Right now, I've got a shop light on it, but it's just a standard T8 um, tube shop light. And right now, of course, I've also got the forward fixture, which is a T5 high output uh, fixture. So I do have quite a lot of lighting down at this end of the tank. And then I've got some very inexpensive repurposed LEDs down at the other end of the tank. But I'd like to get one of those four-foot shop lights and put it on this tank. I think that would look really nice and add a nice sparkle to this tank. And, you know, like I say, we'll have to just wait and see how that one turns out in the long run. My snail tank is still looking pretty good. I put some cuddle bone in there just to add some calcium. My water is really, really, really soft. I have no calcium in it at all. And so snails don't really do well in my water unless I add calcium. And then, of course, if they even do survive, their shells are so soft that it doesn't really serve any purpose for me. My puffer needs that hard, crunchy shell to keep his teeth in check. So me having very soft-shelled snails is not really, there's no point in it. So that little white thing at the bottom is a piece of cuddle bone, and then there's another chunk of it in there floating. I never knew cuddle bone was so um, lightweight, but I got some in there floating. And unfortunately, if you can hear the noise in the background, that is from my poor little princess sassafras. We waited a little too long, time got away from us, and now I think she's going into heat for the first time. Uh, so we have her an appointment for next week, but in the meantime, she has been making an awful lot of noise and been making an awful lot of fuss around the house. So if you hear all that yowling in the background, that's what's going on now. She's walking around underneath my feet. She's probably going to start rubbing up against my legs in a minute here. Anyway, my purple spotted gudgeon here is doing well. He's healed up nicely from all of the scrapes and scratches we were talking about earlier scales have grown back this tank is another one that i keep meaning to get in here i just got to be in the mood to do it the water's fine you know i'm staying on top of maintenance and everything i would just like to get in here and get all of the leaves cleaned up and get a full 
treatment with the ChemiClean in here. I will again put a link below to ChemiClean. Uh, if you put it in your tank, if you've got the cyanobacteria and all the crud and stuff growing in there, it's just some fantastic stuff. It works so much better than any other product I've ever used. So once I do that, I'll have to get my airstone out and you know, you got to run an airstone while you're doing it, but provided you do it properly and follow the instructions, it's, you know, it's not difficult. Just follow the instructions. It really gets the tank cleaned up nicely. And then I'll be able to start. I don't know. I'm thinking about what else I can put in this tank. I'm tired of just having this gudgeon just sort of sitting in there drifting around by himself. I was hoping we'd see that red tail loach occasionally, but that obviously didn't work out in a spectacular way. So what else can I put in there? I don't know. I've never tried like a clown. I mean a um, convict cichlid. You know, something like that size, maybe not too big, but not too aggressive. I did have the T-bar in this tank with the gudgeon, and I separated them because the gudgeon was getting aggressive with the T-bar. So if that's the case, I don't see why a convict would be very much different than the T-bar. And then that leaves me back to scratching my head as to what we could put in this tank. So I don't know. We'll see. But first things first, let's get it cleaned up. Uh, I did slightly remodel it and open the caves up a little bit once I pulled that stupid uh, red tail loach out of here. But for the most part, we haven't done anything other than stay on top of water changes and whatnot in here. So moving on to my 125. You can tell I haven't given everybody dinner yet tonight. I've got my forward LED turned on in this tank, which gives all the rainbow fish all that beautiful color if they move back to the left here a little bit. Maybe if I come down to this end of the tank, this is the end I normally feed everybody. If they see me down here, they might come down. Uh, nothing going on in this tank this week. I did see my chocolate zebra plecos. There's one of them there. Let's see if I can focus again. I did see all three of them down at the other end of the tank, down at this end, and they were in this cave doing their breeding dance, like sort of blocking each other off and sort of darting and dashing around each other and forcing each other back into the cave. There's always two that stay down at this end and stay in these caves, but that third one was down here too, and it definitely looked like some competition. So I don't know if we'll get to ever see some spawning behavior or ever see some suddenly come down here one day and see a whole bunch of baby uh, chocolate zebra plecos in here or not, but I think that would be really neat to see. And, you know, I get the spawning behavior. I've just never seen anything that goes beyond that. Other than that, nothing really going on to speak of in this tank. So we're trailing along already. So we'll move right along to my angelfish tank, as I'm now calling it. And I've got the two angelfish. Here's one. There we go. Get it out into the light a little bit. Really looking forward to what this one's going to look like when it matures. And then here is the other one, which likewise, I'm really looking forward to seeing this one mature. This one's going to be awesome looking, really big, uh, long, elaborate fins on it. If it ever turns, we'll get a little better look at its profile. So that's going to be a good looking fish. The other one's going to be a little more tight and stocky. It's not going to have these long flowing fins. Uh, but both of them are going to look amazing when they get older. I took those two long finned cherry barbs out of my quarantine tank. I believe them both to be female now, so I'm going to try to get some males in this tank. I also took my liar tail panda, what is this, an orange panda molly, but I believe it's a female. The It was should be a liar tail, and I don't see the long... Um, liar tail on it and I suspect that that's uh, indicative of the males. I'm guessing that the females just have normal looking tails. Possibly it's not a liar tail. It came as sort of a freebie so I'm kind of guessing at what it is. Uh, they did have liar tails in the tank next to it so we sort of assumed that it jumped from one tank to the next but that's not necessarily you know means that's not necessarily what it is because it was a little tiny baby when it jumped into the tank. So that's what it's grown up into. I'm quite happy with it. And speaking of which, down here in my quarantine tank, I picked up five peppered quarries today. I picked up four hatchet fish. 
I've still got a bunch of neons in here. I picked up some more neons while they're still on sale. And there it is. If you can see this fish darting around, that's the little freebie I got when I bought those Siamese algae eaters. And as it's growing up, it's turning out to look like a whole lot of nothing. It actually looks like a female gambusia or a um, mosquito fish. It doesn't even look like a guppy. It looks like the guppy's native bland cousin that I can catch wild around here by the millions. So I'm not really sure what it is. I'm going to let it keep growing, but at the size it is now, you'd think you'd see some color or something on it. But that's it. I got pretty much nothing. So moving on to my brackish tank here. Get some of these bags out of my way. Sit down for a moment. She's back. The only thing I've got going on in this tank different this week is... Well, two things. First of all, I've been feeding the tank more. Now that I've got these mollies in here, I've got a lot of shrimp in here, and I've got those bumblebee gobies in here, I've been putting a lot more of the flake food so that it's, you know, everybody's not just relying on leftovers from butterbean being a messy eater. I'm actually putting food specifically in there for the other fish. So hopefully these mollies are going to get nice and big and full size and full color for us as they mature. I also... If you didn't know, I put five of these little bumblebee gobies in there, and they are the coolest little bumblebee gobies ever. They look more like tiger stripes than the old bumblebees I used to have. Um, as I said before, the bumblebees I used to have looked almost cartoonishly bumblebee-like, you know, with the black and orange stripes. These are sort of yellowy orange, and they've got these broken, zigzaggy sort of tiger-looking stripes on them. They're really, really cool-looking bumblebee gobies. I have no idea how big they're ultimately going to get, but, you know, even a big bumblebee goby is still only, you know, half an inch long, maybe three quarters of an inch long tops. So I'm excited to see how that's going to work out. I also added some more ghost shrimp. When I was at the Big Chain Pet Store the other day, they had a whole bunch of them just came in, and they were really big for the Big Chain Pet Store, especially having just shown up. And a bunch of them had eggs they were with Barry as they say and I asked the dude in there to hook me up and he took the time to find five of them that were all loaded up with eggs and so all five of the ones I brought home were with Barry and I don't see any at the moment but I did earlier and actually I can see one right now if you look right on the inside of this rock under there in the darkness I don't know if you can see a silhouette or not but I can see it in there and here's another one underneath this rock back there you can see its silhouette so the ones that are with Barry are definitely laying low and staying in the darkness and hiding and that's just what I want to see because I'm hoping to come in here one day and see lots of little baby shrimp fleeing for their lives as the mollies and everybody uh, go on a feeding frenzy with lots of baby shrimp in this tank that'll be fun if not I've got probably eight or ten adults in the tank now so hopefully we'll get to see some shrimp swimming around here in the fairly near future as well so moving on to my last tank and i will probably guess as i say my least as i usually do when i get to this tank this is my red clawed crab tank i'm pretty sure i'm down to two red clawed crabs i do see them occasionally and that's it. I see them occasionally and that's it. I don't, they never come out really. I just sort of see their claws sticking out from under a rock. Um, in the morning, a lot of times I was kind of hoping we would see one. He lives right under this rock. If I lifted that rock up, we'd probably see him, but he just kind of, you know, he sticks out in the morning and when the lights come on, he ducks back in. And that's usually about the extent of me seeing him. I did have a bunch of water sprite in there and it's all pretty much gone now you can see this little spot of green right there is the only stuff that's left so the next time i get in and do probably some tank maintenance here on my 29 gallon miscellaneous i'll get in there and pull a bunch of babies out and thin out the floating water sprite i've got in this tank and i'll drop it right down here and that way they'll have some live vegetation to crawl around on and eat and maybe we'll get to see them pop their heads out from time to time who knows Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up and say thank you for joining me on our trip all the way around the world. 
don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget this one is my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you real soon in the next one.